and Seymour, the Duchess of Somerset, was born in Stanhope in the year 1497, during the reign of King Henry VII. She was the daughter of Sir Edward Stanhope, a prominent courtier, and his wife, Elizabeth Borchia, and grew up in the world of Tudor politics and intrigue, and she was well educated in languages, music, and the arts. She was also known for her intelligence, wit, and ambition, and she quickly became a favorite of King Henry VIII's second wife, Anne Boleyn. In 1536, Anne Boleyn was executed for treason, and her husband, King Henry VIII, married Jane Seymour. Jane became pregnant soon after their marriage, and in October of 1537, she gave birth to a son, Edward. But tragically, she died just days later from complications of childbirth. After Jane's death, and Seymour became a close friend and confidant of the grieving king. She used her influence to advance the careers of her husband, Edward Seymour, and her brother-in-law, Thomas Seymour, both of whom served in the king's government. In 1547, King Henry VIII died, and his son, the nine-year-old Edward VI, ascended to the throne. Edward Seymour, Anne's husband, was named Lord Protector of the Realm, and Anne became the Duchess of Somerset. As Lord Protector, Edward Seymour wielded immense power, and Anne was his closest advisor. Together, they implemented a series of reforms that would have far-reaching effects on English society. They reformed the legal system, abolished the use of torture in interrogations, and established a system of free public education. But despite their successes, the Seymours were not without their enemies. They were accused of corruption and abuse of power and there were rumours that they were plotting to overthrow the young king and seize the throne for themselves. In 1549, a rebellion broke out in the west of England, led by a man named Thomas Wyatt. The rebels marched on London, demanding the removal of the Seymours from power. The Duchess of Somerset was forced to flee the city, taking refuge in the Tower of London with her husband and their children. For several months, the Seymours remained in the Tower, while their enemies outside plotted their downfall. But in the end, their loyalty to the young king and their determination to protect him from harm won out. They were able to negotiate a peace settlement with the rebels, and the Seymours were once again restored to power. But the damage had been done. The Seymours had lost much of their popularity and their credibility, and their enemies continued to plot against them. In 1551, Edward Seymour was arrested and charged with treason, accused of plotting to overthrow the government and seize the throne for himself. Despite her own fears and doubts, and stood by her husband throughout his trial and imprisonment. She used all of her influence and resources to defend him, but in the end, he was found guilty and sentenced to death. Edward Seymour, the Duke of Somerset, was found guilty of treason and sentenced to death for a number of reasons. Firstly, he had become increasingly unpopular with the ruling elite, including his fellow nobles and members of the Privy Council. This was due in part to his ambitious attempts to centralize power and his perceived arrogance and high-handedness. There were also rumors of corruption and embezzlement within his administration, which further eroded his support. Secondly, Seymour had made a number of serious strategic errors. He had launched a disastrous campaign in Scotland in 1547, which resulted in the loss of the strategically important town of Haddington. He had also angered the powerful Earl of Warwick, John Dudley, by attempting to block his appointment as Lord President of the Council. Dudley would later lead the coup against him. Finally, Seymour's relationship with the young King Edward VI had become strained. Seymour had initially been appointed Lord Protector and Governor of the King's person, giving him enormous power and influence over the young monarch. However, as Edward grew older and more independent, he began to chafe under Seymour's control. In particular, Seymour's attempts to arrange a marriage between Edward and his own daughter, Anne, were viewed as inappropriate and self-serving. In October 1549, Dudley and his allies launched a coup against Seymour, accusing him of corruption and abuse of power. Seymour was arrested and imprisoned in the Tower of London, and a trial was held in December of that year. Despite his attempts to defend himself, he was found guilty of treason and sentenced to death. Seymour was executed on January 22, 1552, by beheading on Tower Hill. His death was a significant moment in the power struggles of the Tudor period, and it marked the end of Seymour's ambitious attempts to dominate English politics. And Seymour, the Duchess of Somerset, and John Dudley, the Duke of Northumberland, were two of the most powerful figures in Tudor England. 
their lives were intertwined in many ways, and their rivalry and animosity would have far-reaching consequences for English history. Anne and John were both members of the powerful Seymour family, and they were both closely associated with the young King Edward VI. After the death of King Henry VIII, Edward became king at the age of nine, and his regency was controlled by a group of powerful nobles, including the Duke of Somerset, Anne's husband. John Dudley was also a member of the Regency Council, and he quickly became a rival to Somerset for control of the government. In 1549, Dudley orchestrated a coup against Somerset, accusing him of corruption and abuse of power. Somerset was arrested and imprisoned in the Tower of London, while Dudley seized control of the government. Anne was deeply affected by her husband's downfall, and she used all of her influence and resources to try to secure his release. She even went so far as to appeal directly to King Edward, pleading with him to pardon her husband. But her efforts were in vain, and Somerset was eventually executed for treason. After Somerset's death, Anne withdrew from public life for a time, mourning her loss and trying to rebuild her shattered reputation. But she soon returned to the court of King Edward, where she became a close advisor to the young king. She used her influence to promote the careers of her sons and to advance the cause of religious reform in England. Meanwhile, John Dudley was consolidating his power, becoming the de facto ruler of England. He continued to be a rival to Anne, and there were rumours that he was planning to marry Edward VI to one of his own daughters, in order to secure his hold on the throne. In 1553, King Edward VI fell ill and was on his deathbed. Dudley saw this as an opportunity to secure his own position, and he arranged for Edward to name his cousin, Lady Jane Grey, as his successor, bypassing the claims of Mary, the rightful heir to the throne. And Seymour, however, was a staunch supporter of Mary, and she saw Dudley's actions as a threat to the stability of the country. She rallied support for Mary and helped to organise a rebellion against Dudley's regime. The rebellion was successful, and Lady Jane Grey was deposed after just nine days on the throne. Mary became queen, and Dudley was arrested and executed for treason. And Seymour lived to see the restoration of the Catholic faith in England and the end of the Tudor dynasty. She died in 1587, at the age of 90, having lived through some of the most tumultuous years in English history. And Seymour, the Duchess of Somerset, was a woman of great intelligence, ambition, and courage. She played a pivotal role in the politics of Tudor England, and she was a key figure in the reform movement that would shape English society for centuries to come. Her legacy, however, was overshadowed by the downfall of her husband, and she remains a relatively unknown figure in English history.